How do you feel on the other side of this victory, Ryan? Are you 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 healthy? Are you did you survive it? Yeah, we uh, we survived it. We survived it just barely. Uh, we were so a really good football team, but uh, you know, very fortunate our defense brought it and pitched a shutout. You know, if it wasn't for them, you know, we might be uh, talking about a different story. So, man, hats off to the defense in that game. Well, Ryan, as you know, your head coach Rocky Long does not mix words. Earlier this today on the morning show, he just said offensively, we need to do a whole lot better. So a lot of new offensive looks for you guys. Give us some of the pluses, some of the things you need to work on, maybe things you didn't see happen that you expected to happen in that opening game against Weber State. Um, the pluses we can kind of take from the game is uh, we're coming out victorious. Yeah, we're one and oh. Other than that, you can't really take too many um, too many plus out of it. When you only put up six points as an offense, uh, it's not good enough no matter who you're playing against. Uh, so we just need to work on, you know, obviously we had the new offense in and um, it was different from what we expected going against a different opponent who game planned us. And, you know, we were stayed through the kitchen sink at us. They, they threw everything they had at us. They had a great game plan. They, you know, their players played extremely tough and they were a great team. And you guys could, you know, see that on Saturday. But uh, the best part is we came out winners. Uh, we're one and zero, and we're going against a good football team in UCLA. And you know we're hungry for it, and we're going to get better in every aspect. Hey Ryan, seven and one as a starter, how does that feel? Right? I mean, it's a team sport. I get it. But when you're in a position as important as quarterback, understanding the value that you've brought to this program already uh, throughout the season last year, replacing Christian Chapman while he was injured, and then this early win in the season, what's that like on a personal level? Um, you try not to think about that too much. I know after the game, I think someone told me that stat, and I wasn't, you know, too happy after the game, and I was like, it's kind of cool. So in the moment, you don't really think about it. You know, maybe after my career, I can look back and, you know, point to those stats. But in the moment, you just think about the next game. That, that's all you can care about. I mean, if I go 1-0 and this week and try and help my team, put my team in the best position to win, then that's really all that matters. And, you know, at the end, when I'm done with football, I can look back and, and smile at those accolades, and that's when you know it will be more. But in the moment, you don't really focus on it. As the quarterback, Ryan Agnew is joining us. So, Ryan, getting back to this game against Weber State, we we hear about all the the new looks, uh, spread offense, Wildcat, some of the new looks for this Aztec offense, and you practice it. But as you said, Weber State game plan extremely well through a lot of different looks at you guys. What are some of the things that you think you need to work on maybe personally as an offensive unit to get this offense to where you want it to be? Uh, personally, you know, when you spread it out, you can do... Sorry, that was a little buzzer back in practice. That's okay. Um, <laughs> it's all good. I, it's, uh, it gives all the have... to our show. We like that kind oh, of stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. We, uh, we just got to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. If they're going to present it to us, uh, we got to be able to win the one-on-ones. That's, you know, with me putting the ball in the perfect spot so our, you know, receivers, tight ends, and running backs can transition and run and start running backs making one guy miss and taking it, you know, to the house. Or, you know, that's me having to make somebody miss and got free. And that's, that's pretty much the big thing is, you know, winning your one-on-one -on -one matchup. And if we can all do that and do our job, then, you know, this offense is going to flourish. You know, no matter what offense you're in, if you do your job, you do it as best you can. That's what's going to make, make us successful. And Saturday, we just didn't do it well enough. And, you know, it showed. You know, I watching Christian Chapman last year and actually over the past two seasons as a color analyst for the Aztecs, you start to become very familiar with the throws that a quarterback's comfortable making. And I remember the Micah Holder, you know, 10-yard, 12-yard comeback route. It just felt like, you know, I mean, peanut butter and jelly, right? Every time that route was ran, they were able to connect on it. Have you found that receiver or have you found that route that you just love when it's dialed up for you? Uh, there's, there's a couple of routes that uh, I would love throwing in practice. I don't want to, you know, give too much out. You never know if you see other people listening. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely routes I love to throw to certain guys. And uh, now we just got to be able to do it on Saturday night that, or Saturday during the day at 115 against UCLA. That's going to be the biggest thing is taking those practice reps that, you know, you love doing and uh, transitioning over to Saturday, you know, when it's game time. But yeah, I definitely have those, those routes and those concepts that, you know, I love to throw in certain situations.
I got to ask you about this one. Um, I'm sure this was not uh, drawn up in the playbook, so to speak. You were improvising late in the game. You were coming towards the near sideline, or I should say for you, the far sideline. Or no, no, the home sideline. You were coming toward the press box, and you launched the ball back toward the middle of the field. You caught Daniel Bellinger, tight end, number 88, a guy we're starting to get to know better, right in the middle of the field. Uh, great completion, amazing play that you were able to accomplish. But what was the reception like when you guys finished that drive and you got off the field? Uh, that's a play that you high-five and you're happy about in the moment, but you go back on film and you say, don't do that again. And if you do that again, it better work. And if it doesn't work, you're in trouble. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much all you say. So uh, I kind of pushed my luck a little too far on that one. Really lucky. You know, Bellinger went up and made a great play. You know, but he, he made a great catch. I, I trusted him. I trusted him a lot on that one. Now, was he your intended target? Like, because when you let it go. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, like you hold I your. Saw, br- I yeah. just saw the biggest volume of the field. I said, that's my guy. Here you go. <laughs> I love that. I love it. <laughs> now, yeah. I got to get to this UCLA uh, game right now. I'll, I'll tell you up front, I am a UCLA graduate, and uh, there have been a number <sighs> yeah, of uh, no good. games <clears> over <throat> the years. Uh, this is a, to say it's a one sided series uh, would be an understatement. The UCLA's beaten the Aztecs now 19 straight times. They're 21 0 and 1 all time. Two questions for you, Ryan. Don't one, take a parade well, lap first around of all, here. This is a like, guy that is 7 1 as a starter. <laughs> hey, um, I want to get your thoughts about, first of all, playing in the Rose Bowl, one of the most fabled stadiums in all of America. And if you do win this game, I mean, we're talking about a series that goes back 93 years, the first time they faced off against each other. What exactly would that mean for you and the program to get that victory against UCLA? Um, I guess I'll answer that first question first. Playing in the Rose Bowl, this is something that you know I've looked forward to for a couple of years now. Playing in the, the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all, the first bowl game ever ever created, you know, about a hundred years ago. Uh, it's going to be special to play in that atmosphere. So it's been really cool walking in and seeing the sign of the Rose Bowl. And but once you get in there, you know, it's a normal stadium like always. So as soon as I walk in, I'll, I'll understand the significance of it, and I'll you know I'll soak it all in. But as soon as the game goes, you know all that goes out the window. And then uh, for the series, the uh, 0, 22 and one uh, sequence. Uh, personally, I was not involved in any of those. Uh, none of my teammates were involved in any of those. And that's kind of our mindset: is we can't uh, bring in the past and you know think it's been a one-sided uh, one-sided uh, rivalry because you know none of us have been a part of it yet. So. Our goal is to go one and zero, do as best as we can with our team, and you know we we've had success in the past against the bigger schools that you know might have looked down on us a little bit, and so we kind of go in with that um, underdog mentality, chip on our shoulder, and you know we're going to go in there guns a blaze and you know give give them everything we got because uh, we know we have a good football team, and you know we're excited to show it. Uh, you know, if I could give you just one piece of advice, my last collegiate game I ever played in was at the Rose Bowl. We were playing in the bowl game, Penn State versus USC. Now, that didn't turn out very well for Penn State. We got dominated by Pete Carroll and Mark Sanchez. He carved us up. We were in, you know, cover three the entire game. Uh, uh, miserable memory to bring up. Yeah, bad one. But yeah. I, I will say this. It's warm there, Ryan, so I want you to hydrate. It is warm in that bowl. Oh, it is. Oh, and it's yeah. sidelines. It uh, is coaches, cooking. Uh, yeah, our coaches have told us about that, and uh, this week of practice in San Diego, it's going to be pretty warm, so uh, we're hydrated as much as we can, get prepared as much as we can, and you know, we're going to be ready when Saturday comes. What was your excitement level when you found out that Jeff Horton, Ron Carragher, and Rocky gave his blessings for these guys to put their heads together and switch this to the spread? I know uh, growing up in Texas, you ran that in high school. You had a tremendous amount of success, both rushing and passing the football during your time uh, in high school. Uh, were you just thrilled to hear the news that, that this was going to be a, a spread football team for the first time in a long time? Yeah, I was. I was really excited. Um, I mean, I love being able to play quarterback for San Diego State and then now open up the offense to where, you know, the quarterback has a little more freedom and a little more, you know, room room to roam, as you may say, you know, with more receivers on the field and getting the ball in tailback's hands in, in various ways. Um, I was really excited. Um, it's kind of like that backyard football that you're used to. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was really excited and, you know, happy that they – you know, put that trust in us because it's really tough to change the entire offense and 
as soon as they committed to changing the offense, you know, day one we came back from that winter break. We, we started installing and getting it going. And, you know, it was a tough process at first, you know, changing everything and all the lingo and all the plays and all that stuff. But, you know, it's coming together, and uh, we're really happy to see it, you know, get moving in the right direction. Well, Ryan, congratulations on getting off to a winning start. Again, you're 7-1 and as a starting quarterback. It's all about the W, Ryan. Good luck at the Rose Bowl against the Bruins. I'll say that as a UCLA guy. Good luck, Ryan, <laughs> this coming Saturday out there at the Rose Bowl. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.